Okay, guys, we're back on the 273 Commando project. What did we do? Well, we did a little bit of work on the chamber. I wanted to leave the valves in so you could see just a couple splatters on the exhaust. And a uh, decent job with the dicum in the chamber. Uh, I'll be honest, I, I totally forgot to do the dicum and I jammed the, the, the head back on the bench and just opened the valve. And I guessed at the lift, so the lift may be a little bit different. Let's see, uh, let's see what the bore looks like. Okay, not too bad. Okay, the valve doesn't have a whole lot on it, except on the seat. How do we look in the bowl? We look pretty good. Notice I did change the angle of our, our roof fin. Uh, that looks a lot better. You can see a little bit on the other side. I'll think about moving it a touch more. Uh, trouble is, there's not going to be a whole lot of metal left. If you take a look at the valve job, you can see all those pretty cuts that were in there are pretty much gone. Because we need to bring it up to the throat size that we need. And in reality, I may wind up putting a, a, a lower cut on that lower cut. It depends how I feel about it. What I wanted to do now was, th this has been fully ported, but it's it hasn't been scienced out. So our short sides, when, I, when you put the bigger valve in, you change our profile on our short side quite a bit. It's, it's kind of standing up quite a bit now. I'll show you. Okay, it's an interesting demo because in reality, it's not there anymore. It's, it's moved more like this, right? Because it's got a bigger valve in it. Okay, obviously, you need to be careful of this. You can't just, you can't just bang away at it. And that, because that's a, a curve right there, it's going to be tough for the Sonic to uh, figure it out. So I would, I would definitely err on the side of caution there. But if you take a look at this versus the stock design, I'm pretty sure we're going to need to do some layback on that. Now, there hasn't really been any layback on it yet. Uh, the speeds across it are actually quite good until it loses it because it's, it's so st stood up. So let's take a look. Let's take a look right down its throat. Okay, the opening's a little bit taller. These do have googly-eyed ports. They don't, they don't match, so I'm not going to go nuts until I get the gaskets for it and get a better idea exactly where they need to be. So these are still a little bit smaller than the 340 uh, intake openings. So we flowed this with some porting done to it. You can see the roof fin has been shortened, but I didn't drastically change it like I did on the ones I did for DV. I'm still debating on whether it's worth all that time to remove all of that. The pinch was widened quite a bit, and it's taller. The bowl is much wider than it was originally, and uh, let's see, my brain's my brain's freezing. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see that dicum, but that looks pretty good. Not bad. Okay, you can see that the short side has been cleaned up. I haven't taken a ton of metal off of it. If we look at it from this angle, we have a little bit of an overhang still. But I am a little bit leery about bringing that down. Because remember, the more you bring this edge down, the straighter you stand that uh, short side up. That may not be uh, a huge advantage at this point. The texture is just uh, like a 40 grit. Okay, and on the left you can see it's still burnt. I didn't even, I, m I missed that whole section there. Okay, you can see the bowl and everything is starting to shape up very similar to the ones I did for Mission Impossible, which of course makes sense because uh, I did a ton of work to those. The bowl is not thin yet, but it does have a couple thin spots spots. So I need to just just like any other just like any other project, you really have to uh, pay attention to what you're doing and the Sonic gets tons and tons of use. 
Now, if you remember back, I did the Mission Impossible. I wasn't able to make the bowls the same from like a left and a right port because the distance between here and the sidewall, I couldn't, I couldn't get them the same on all of them because the core shift is so far off in the casting. But what I did notice this time is this port is almost identical to this port. And this port is almost identical to this port. So if you can get those pretty much the same, the swirl curve is going to be different. As you have more bowl on this side of the valve stem, you're going to have less swirl than if you have more area on this side of the valve stem. It's just the way it seems to work. At least that's the way I see it. If you see it differently, please let me know in the comments. Okay, the exhaust is nothing special. We didn't even set the, uh, the throat ratio. We just machined it out a little bit. Took out the lumps and bumps. Can't even get all the casting lines on, uh, I think it's, uh, which side is it? I think it's this side. You can't get them all out because you wind up making it too thin. <clears throat> so you got to be careful on that as well. You're able to radius that roof into the, uh, the flat part of the roof, but I wouldn't go crazy right there because if you take a look on the cutaway, there's not a whole lot there. It looks like, okay, what we're talking about is this area right here. It looks like you can really radius this in, but if you take a look at the other side, it's going to be tough to show you guys. Let's see if I can get this right in here. There's not a whole lot, guys. There's not a whole lot. It looks like there's a lot this way, right? You could put a nice radius in. I would do it, but I would uh, I would be cautious because that radius goes right to the here. This is where you want to radius it in. Okay, typical Chrysler. You could probably make this completely flat, but you better use a Sonic. I'm going to leave it a little bit thick. This actually does go up a little bit here and down a little bit here. But at this point, we've got plenty of exhaust flow, and I'd rather leave it a little bit thicker because there is water right under this. We can actually look in the side of this casting. This casting doesn't have core plugs, so we can actually look right through it and take a look uh, how that port's shaped. Okay, you can see that dent right in it. The only reason I think they do that is to get extra water right there. I, I would have never done it that way. You can see the exhaust doesn't have any fancy texture or anything on it. We're just trying to get uh, clean it up, made it a little bit wider, and uh, see where we are. Okay, bottom page is bowl blend. From there we go to the first cut. Let's compare them. Doesn't even look like a winner. Minus, 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 plus, plus, plus. Here we're up 17. Still nowhere near where we need to be. But think back, uh, Eric did uh, the ported fuelies that only flowed about that much. It made 474 horsepower. So we're inching up on it. But I'm, I'm sure after I clean up, notice what happens. We go 217 and then we dive, right? The short side, we have noise at this point. The short side's already lost it. At 0.35, the short side's already in trouble. So we need to fix this short side without making any holes in the casting. Had we do as far as swirl, let's compare the two swirls. Now I did change the shape of the fin, so we're comparing these swirls to these swirls. These pluses and minuses are the difference. Equals, minus, 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 plus, minus, 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 plus, 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 minus. Are they both fine curves? Yeah, we got more than we need. And But it's going to be interesting to see what we got when we put the intake on it. Okay, top, top first cut air speeds. These pluses and minuses are in reference to these. Plus, plus, minus. Notice how much faster the pinch is already. 
and we're not even close to where we should be. This is only at 0.6. It's only flowing 209, so it's flowing 10 more than our last flow sheet at that lift. The roof, minus, minus, we lost it on both sides of the roof. Remember, we gained a lot of area in the roof because it's fully ported, not just bowl blended. Okay, and our short side got some more work. Was it positive or was it negative? Well, we got a minus plus plus. Uh, it's relatively even, but it was pretty even. It was pretty even before. This was, this is not as even as this, but it's not bad. Okay, from the looks of this, our first cut exhaust is actually a loser compared to how it was bowl blended. Now, I will... There's, there's not a lot of metal removed from the fully ported one to the bowl blended one because it's just cleaning up a lot of the flash and stuff. But that doesn't give you a whole lot of CFM. So we're topping out at 600, 172 here. 174 here, that's one plus. Everything else is minus except for all the way up top. This port is definitely quieter though. We do have some noise up here. We had three spots of noise there. We only got two spots of noise here. Let's take a look at the airspeeds and see if we can figure out what's going on. Well, we look at the airspeeds and we can see all pluses except for the floor. The floor went down a little bit, but everything else went up quite a bit. From 179 to 243. All right, relatively big gains. Big gains. Big gain, decent gain, big gain. All right, according to the airspeeds, it's definitely working better. It's only flowing a few CFM more, but it's working better. So what do we need to do from that point on? We need to figure out what, I mean, overall, it's it's really not, it's not terrible. It's 174, you put a pipe on it, it's 197.2. It's not terrible. I would like to fatten this curve up a little bit more. So I will probably do uh, a little more bowl width and clean the textures more than anything else and get our throat ratio set. And I have a feeling the exhaust is going to be done. It's not going to need a ton of R&D because cause these air speeds are quite good where they are. And this will probably pick up when we fix the throat ratio a little bit. If you don't think that's correct, guys, you let me know. I just realized when I did the bowl blend, I didn't do it with the intake manifold on it. So we're going to have to go back to the, the stocker when the head is only flowing 180. And you put the manifold on it and it's 154. Let's compare that to what we've got. Now the manifold hasn't been touched. And I put the tapered spacer on upside down instead of doing the clay. So that literally, literally only changes CFM like 2 CFM. Okay, this is the stock manifold, the stock head with the bigger valves. How do we look? Well, we've got all pluses all the way down. How much did we gain? Well, we gained 20 CFM. Now, the manifold hasn't been touched, guys. It's still full of dirt and rust and carbon and it's too big for the head so not terrible i mean i would like to get that over quite a bit over 200 flowing through a carb intake in the head that may not be the easiest thing in the world to do i was actually talking to brian salter about this and uh, his view on on these heads is it's going to be tough to get enough airflow to feed that over 6,000. I agree with him because it's not going to be a small engine. I'm not telling you the stroke, but it is not going to be a small engine. And these ports are tiny. I don't remember exactly what they CC stock, but it's not much. You guys can put that in the, in the comments because I'm not going to CC them stock. I'll tell you right now. And, uh, I don't even remember what I got out of the ones that I sent to DV for the Mission Impossible. I'm going to say they were only about 150 cc's done. 
All right. I think that covers it, guys. Oh, we can look at the swirl. Here, look at the swirl stock versus what it is with the ported head and unported intake. It's pretty much dead. Here it has a lot more swirl. That has to do with my fin and so forth I did in the, in the bowl. Plus, I have very even uh, speeds on the roof of that port at this point. So you don't get anything until you start losing it on the short side. And then you start to swirl. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night.